We enjoy viewing high quality color photos due to the wide range of colors they display. In the past, photos were only available in black and white. However, even those photos contain some colors, but in various shades of gray. The key element in all of these is the vision aspect, which is why it is called computer vision. The term computer refers to processing of visual data by the computer, while vision pertains to dealing with visual data such as images and videos. So welcome to the world of images. It is fascinating and expansive world filled with vibrant colors. Firstly, we will gain understanding of images and then delve into their processing techniques. Images consist of pixels, which are smaller components. Conversely, videos are composed of multiple frames, each of which is essentially an image. The diagram provides a clear overview of the different components of pixels, images and videos. In this video, we will exclusively cover images and pixels. Additionally, we will introduce the OpenCV library and its commonly used functions for basic image processing. In OpenCV, images are represented as NumPy arrays. As a quick reminder, NumPy is a Python module used for numerical computation, renowned for its high speed processing capabilities. In the previous video, we have created NumPy array as well. So if you want to watch that video, links will be in the cards. Now we already know that images are composed of pixels, which are tiny square structures that combine to form an image. They are fundamental components of every image. To illustrate, consider an image that is made up of millions of various colors. Let us take a closer look at the pixels. If we continue to zoom in on the pillar from the image, what will happen? Eventually, we will reach a point where the image will look like this. If you closely examine the image, you will notice small squares within it called pixels. The size of a pixel varies depending upon the devices. The resolution of an image is often described in pixels per inch. A higher number of pixels per inch means higher resolution. For example, a DSLR camera will produce an image with more pixels per inch than a laptop webcam. Let's compare the image to its higher resolution version. We can see that higher resolution image allows us to zoom in on a specific area and still see a clear and detailed image unlike the lower resolution image. As you may be aware, a pixel is the smallest unit in an image and takes a square shape to locate a specific pixel. We use its location in the image which is determined by image coordinate system. In OpenCV, the standard coordinate system originates at the image's top left corner, denoted by 00. Moving to the right increases the X coordinate and moving downwards increases the Y coordinate. It is worth noting, however, that this coordinate system is not universally adopted. Let's explore a coordinate system. In the image, we have added a horizontal X axis and vertical y-axis. The x-axis runs horizontally while y-axis runs vertically. The origin of a coordinate system is located at the top left corner of the image. With this information, we can determine the coordinate of the orange point at the top left, the green point at the center, and the blue point at the bottom right. Since the orange point is at the origin of the coordinate system, its coordinates are 0, 0. To find the coordinate of a blue point, we assume that the image width is W and its height is H. Therefore, the X coordinate of the blue point will be W and H. Let's consider the center point's coordinate. The X coordinate will be W by 2 and the Y coordinate will be H by 2. Therefore, the center pixel's coordinate will be W by 2 and H by 2. As an extra challenge, you can determine the coordinate system of other pixels in the image. Knowing a pixel location can help us gather information about specific pixel or a group of pixels. Let's start by understanding what size means when it comes to images. The size of an image is determined by its height and width. However, when downloading images from website, you may come across options that shows numbers. You may wonder if these numbers are in centimeters, millimeters, or some other unit of measurement. Interestingly, these numbers are actually in pixels. They represent the number of pixels present in the image. For instance, an image with a size of 1920 by 3413 will have a total of approximately 6.5 million colors. These numbers are sometimes linked to the resolution of the image as well. 
An image with a higher number of pixels contain more details. In other words, you can zoom in further without losing the clarity of the image. Let's delve into the concept of channels, specifically the image displayed on the presentation slide. In the event of someone inquiring about what is visible in the image, a human may perceive it as a pink, but a computer would break it down into numerical values. This is because computer process colors in a three channel format, red, green and blue. The intensity of these colors ultimately determine the final color. For example, the color in question has an intensity of 255 in red, the green intensity of 81 and blue intensity of 127. This is precisely why there exists a disparity between human and computer vision. Now we know that every image has three distinct attributes related to its size, width, height and the number of channels. Each channel of an image is compilation of pixel values that ranges from 0 to 255. It is noteworthy that the channel of an image bears a resemblance of 2D array. As a result, an image can be seen as a compilation of 2D matrix stacked on top of each other. So until now we have only talked about 2D arrays which is suffix for grayscale image. However, we are aware that RGB images aren't like 2D arrays. They possess not only height, width, but also an additional dimension, the number of channels in the image. This is why we refer to RGB image as 3D array. Now that we have understood the theory part of how images are represented, let's get our hands dirty by writing some code using the OpenCV library in Python. So this video is going to be very interesting and long. So I'll see you in part two of this video.